StallionEsearch.com presents a look at the career of legendary quarter horse jockey G.R. Carter Jr. right down to it. We can't win a horse race without a good horse underneath of you and a trainer can or a jockey can either one. You got you got to have the horse to start with and then you got to be able to get what that horse has in him out of him at the right time and uh, all those great trainers they they seem to have that and 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 the great jockeys are the the ones that know their horses because they've been out here doing something in the mornings and have their self physically fit and able and, and mentally mentally able to to get them there and not not screw the deal up more or less you know it, it there's a lot there's a lot of ways to screw to, to lose a horse race and there's only one to one way to win one and that's be in front of them you know and sometimes got a lot of guys will get in the horse's way and keep that from happening i never really focused on any one particular particular jockey you know like when i'm in the gate because i i, I break it down to what the best what what I where I know my horse, what his tendencies are, and uh, and and what it take to win this particular race. But you know, there's there's guys like I, one of my best friends for many years was Joe Badia. You know, we we used to play around and rib one another and talk trash a lot. So there was a lot of that going on back when I was friends with Joe there for a lot of years. And uh, but of course, you know, you got to you like you mentioned Nicodemus. You know, I I did. Ride, ride race here. He was rode a little bit that winter meet. That first winter meet, I was in California. I was around him, and you know he's like a shoemaker-like mythical figure. And then, of course, Jackie. You know, I rode against Jackie forever and ever. And and uh, Jackie, he's he's tough. You know, he's he's like like Jack Brooks, like you know when when the money's on the line and what whether he's whether he's been in a slump or 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 winning every everything. You know, and if he, if he's in there and on. If he's in there and on a, a live horse in the race, you you gotta you gotta beat him. You know you had he was there to contend with. And uh, but like I said, I never really just focused on any one person. It was just more or less knowing my my horse and and his tendencies and and doing the best job I can do to get that horse in front to to the finish line. Yeah, with Jackie, you know, you know he's there's no there's no one that's. I mean, the numbers are all there too. I mean, that's it's crazy to think that one jockey won the All American seven times. You know, I've I've been out there. I've ridden almost every race, the, the, almost every All American for the last 20 years, and I've only won twice. It's a hard race to win. You know, there's just there's so many factors. You know, you, you're, I, I can't tell you how many times that what I felt like was the best horse I had going in trials didn't even make the finals. You know, you get that, and then, then it just the factors on race day. It's it's a tough race to win. You know, I, it's there's so, so many of those great riders that that I know that it the that the the down point of their career is that that they didn't win the All American. Guys like Bobby Adair, Kenny Hart. You know, I've talked to them about it, and they've told me. You know, I, I had a great career, but I didn't win the All American. You know, and that's that you almost you almost hate it for them because they were. They were great riders and legends in their era, and uh, and they they feel they don't they, they feel unfulfilled because they didn't win that race. American, you know, that's everybody's dream is, you know, to, to win an All American. You know, if I if I hadn't won an All American, uh, you know, I my career would almost seem unfulfilled. But by winning that race, it just it gives you that feeling of fulfillment, to accomplish what you wanted to. And uh, of course, Jack is the guy that just whenever I got in with Jack, I was destined to to, ha to have a better chance at least of winning an All American. You know, he's he's the epitome of quarter horse racing. You know, there's two or three guys that that you know have just ruled the sport. You know, Blaine Swanevelt, Jack Brooks, and I guess Paul Jones has kind of put his name in in that same category. And uh, being around the guy, he is really the utmost, the utmost horseman. You know, the, I, I don't believe there was any guy I've ever, and I've, and I've was around, I've been around them all one time or another. The guys that the three I just mentioned, Heath Taylor, you know, all the great trainers are here and the West Coast and Rios. So I've, I've ridden for most all of them at one time or another, and then if the ones I hadn't ridden a lot for, I've at least studied their, their, uh, their weaknesses and their, and their great qualities and. 
Sleepy Gilbert, he's, you know, but, but Jack is probably as good as there ever was or ever has been at taking a horse and pointing that horse to a race and getting the absolute best performance out of that horse in that one race for the money. You know, he, when he qualified just one horse for the All-American, watch, watch out because uh, he's going to he's going to be dialed in and have that horse that ride for that to give a great performance that day and that's exactly what happened when i won my first all-american in 98 it was for jack we qualified a mare named falling in love again that i believe she had the ninth or tenth fastest time got beat two or three lengths by old habits in the trials and then come the finals she's 20 to one and she just run the perfect race at the perfect time just left her getting it on and just run a beautiful race and held off old habits and uh and got and get and gave me my first All-American and I believe Jack's seventh.